spending two hours with us. We are now being recorded. Um, so uh, I will be walking you through how to create a new uh, blog down website made um, with a, a Hugo theme that I've been developing called Hugo Apparel. Uh, and in the process, we'll be using a lot of different services. So part of the pre-work was to get you set up with those. Uh, but we're going to go kind of slow. And my hope is that you'll be working along with us. I actually don't have any slides. I'm going to do mainly live coding and do it along with you. Uh, and we may take some uh, breaks to give you some time to fill in some content. But my working assumption is that you'll fill in the content later. But what I'd like for you all to leave with is a site that works, um, a site that deploys to Netlify. So you have a link that you can share and a site where you can edit things locally and have those propagate to your online website easily. And I'm assuming that you'll come back in with your content and fill it in later. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily approach today as a time to develop your website and all the content in it. I'm hoping it'll spark some creativity for you and uh, give you a chance to realize all the, the kind of strings and glue that hold it all together and figure out how to edit it on your own. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen and that is all I'm going to do for prep. Let's see, can everybody see my whole screen? Yes. Can someone give me a thumbs up. I see Janelle is one of my top people. <laughs> Janelle, can you can you see my screen? Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to minimize my uh, my Zoom. I'm on a very small little laptop screen. Okay, uh, so the pre work that we shared with you all was let me close up my tabs was from uh, an, a workshop that I did for our Studio Global, which was this past January. And we did it for the our studio global diversity scholars and so it was a two-day workshop this is a lot less time but i'm hoping that we'll be able to get you pretty far to be able to work on your own uh, if you didn't set up our studio cloud that's okay that's sort of a fail safe for if nothing else works for you but um, I'm hoping that what you did was follow the instructions to set up GitHub locally, which was following the instructions from uh, the book Happy Get With R by Jenny Bryan. Uh, I had a few opinionated recommendations as well um, that I think are kind of best practices going forward with some new changes to how GitHub works. Uh, and then um, signing up for Netlify. So uh, going online to netlify.com and creating an account. Hopefully if you click log in, you have an account there. Um, you can see that I use Netlify a lot. If I go to sites, I don't even know if it, it luckily it doesn't tell me account, but I've got more than one page of sites. Um, so uh, hopefully you can log into a Netlify site and you will have one shortly. So those are really the two main prerequisites. Uh, what I would love for everyone to do, I'm gonna provide a link in the chat. Quickly into the GitHub. All right. So I've created a repository for us to work from. And I would love for you all to visit this link now. Put it in the chat. So when you click on that link, you should see the same page that I'm showing on my screen now. Uh, so this is to a GitHub repository, uh, and this is a starter repo for our workshop today. So hopefully while you all get there, um, uh, you can see that there's a readme, and the readme is what we're actually going to follow today instead of using slides, because I think that's a little bit easier when you're working with a website and you have a lot of deploys going back and forth, um, looking at a, a screen of slides versus what's on your local machine can be confusing. So I tried to keep it pretty basic. Uh, and at first, I'm just going to show you what this site looks like. So this site, all of the files that you're seeing here, this is a Hugo website. And it's built with a specific theme, the theme Hugo Apparel. And the Hugo Apparel theme files live in this themes folder. So they live in themes, Hugo Apparel. And you can see that there's all these folders there, archetypes, assets, an example site, layouts, and static. And this is really the guts of the theme. So this is actually the work that I've put in already to make your site look nice. Um, so, you know, if you think about like someone has to write the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript to make a website look really good. So I've done that all for you and I've used Hugo to do that. Uh, so that is the, the themes folder and all you really need to know about it. And I really recommend leaving it as a read only folder. Um, so don't, don't touch it, leave that alone, but know that that's what's there and that's what's powering your site. 
Everything else we're going to touch and fill in. The main place for all your uh, website content will be is content. So I'm gonna show you uh, what the site looks like now and kind of lead you through a little bit. So uh, if you click on this silly Babbage link, that's the random link that Netlify provided me. So if you open that up, that's a live website. This is using the Hugo Apparel theme. So this is what we're going to be making today. You can see that it's kind of made for personal websites. So we have the name, we have maybe a role that you might have or a title that you want people to associate with you. Uh, we have links to social accounts here, which are nice. Uh, you have a little place to put a little blurb or biography of yourself and a picture, because I think that's a nice way to land on a web page. Uh, there's a little footy here that gives you some information about the Hugo theme itself. And we have a license, a contact form, and then this top nav bar, which takes you to the about page, a blog section, projects, and talks. Now, if you click on this read more button, you go straight to the about page in this website. And you can see that I have kind of a little, little bit more intro of the person that this website is about. And I happened to make this site when I was watching um, a very bad TV show that I do not recommend really. I don't like that I liked it, but I really kind of enjoyed it. I think it was called like Emily in Paris on Netflix. Um, so uh, I don't necessarily recommend it, but that's who Emily Cooper is. And I created this uh, site with some, some theater content from her. So cultures clash as I adjust to the challenges of life in Paris while juggling my career, new friendships and love life. Here's how to catch up with me lately. Uh, so then when you kind of scroll down, you can see that the um, what was above sort of disappears, but then this sidebar over here kind of stays um, and gives, you know, people kind of like a little bookmark of your picture, a role, icons. Uh, I've also built in a how to say my name function. So if you have a name that might be hard to pronounce, this is a way for you to be able to put it out there so that people can click on it really quickly. I saw that on a few different people's personal websites. And I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, my maiden name before I got married, I'm Allison Hill now, which is super easy, but um, my maiden name was Presmanis. And I can tell you that it was never said correctly on the first try. So uh, if you have a name that might be difficult to pronounce, um, I think that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, then you have some a place to kind of put bookmarks. I see people using this to link out to places that they are elsewhere if they have roles in other organizations and they have other websites that you know tell a little bit more of their story in different places this is a place to put them um, but Emily uses it to tell you about her interests so Paris pastries and people and then on the left you can see I designed this to be a little bit more of what we call um, uh, lately a now page um, so uh, the idea being that your CV or your resume might be a little bit out of date but this is a really quick way for people to see what you're up to lately. Uh, so you can populate it with some text here and then it auto populates from the rest of your site here. Uh, so I'll show you how to do all of that. And I think that's kind of one of the nicest features of this theme. I designed it so that it has an actual proper about page so people can get to know you better. Uh, and that's part of the naming of the theme in general, the Hugo Apero theme. Uh, Apero is sort of a unique um, uh, get together in French culture that uh, my French friends told me was uh, a time when you could kind of casually get to know one another, um, uh, you know, have sort of like, uh, small appetizers and drinks, uh, and it's not very formal, but it's uh, really kind of just a time to hang out. And I thought that that was kind of nice because that's sort of what I'd like your website to be for you. Um, a place where you like hanging out because you're gonna need to maintain it and you're gonna need to add content to it and you're gonna wanna update it as your life updates, but then also a place where you'd like to invite other people to it and feel pretty proud about it. So that's the about page. Next up is a blog. We'll talk about how to populate that as well. And there's lots of different configuration options for that. You do not have to have a blog though for this to be a, a useful website theme because I also built in a, a place to add projects and they're designed for people who are our stats users. So if you happen to get a hex sticker and be one of the lucky ones, you can put them here and the image sizes will automatically um, show the hexes and not crop them off. Um, and also talks. So if you give talks or if you have other events that you'd like to showcase, you can put them here. You can see that there's a little bit different metadata here on the talks page. So you get a date um, and uh, you also get some little buttons that allow you to link out to things. So we're gonna be going through this site and you're gonna make one right now. So that was my mini tour of the Hugo Apero theme. If you go back to this GitHub repository that I linked to earlier, I'd like for everybody to scroll down to the readme.md, you should see the name Hugo Apparel, and then you should see this little button that says deploy to Netlify. 
And if you're following along, I want you to just click on that right now and I'm going to do it as well. So you should see this page. Welcome to Netlify. So it says step one, connect to GitHub. Connect Netlify to your GitHub account to create this new repos excuse me, repository. Um, I'm going to select connect to GitHub because I want it to do that. Now I've already authorized it. You might get an authorization queue at this point and it's safe to authorize Netlify um, uh, to access your GitHub. I'm gonna wait a second and let people kind of walk through that in case you did get an extra notification. Maybe if you're following along, I'm gonna look at the, um, the list of participants. Uh, if you all could give me uh, in Zoom, I don't know if you've seen this, I think there's a reactions or did it change? It's usually a way to do like a little thumbs up, but I don't have it here. Maybe just throw it in the chat if you're um, to the point where you've authorized authorized GitHub. Okay, it looks like, oh, some people figured out the reactions. I don't have the reactions anymore and I just used this like yesterday. Um, Maybe it's because I'm a co-host. All right. So welcome to Netlify, get your site in one minute. I have authorized GitHub. And so now if you read this little fine print, maybe I'll make mine bigger. Hmm, doesn't seem to scale when I, oh, there we go. There we go. All right, so uh, you can see it has a repository name. Now you can change that if you don't want the default. So IYO for me stands for introduce yourself online for this workshop, but um, maybe I'll change it to Emily Cooper. It doesn't matter what you name it, but this is gonna be the name of your new repository in your GitHub. So what it's actually doing under the hood is pretty amazing. It's gonna deploy your site to Netlify. It's going to fork my repository and plop it in your GitHub. So you'll have your own set of files now that are the exact same copy as my starting template. It'll be in a repository in your GitHub account and it'll already be deployed to Netlify. So all of the wiring and the linkages there will be all set up for you with this one click, which is why I love starting here. So go ahead and give it a meaningful repository name. Um, I wouldn't use spaces. Uh, I would try maybe not to use camel case unless that's like your style and you can remember that. Um, uh, make it something meaningful, but it doesn't have to be your name. It doesn't have to be anything special. A lot of people put, you know, website or blog down or anything like that. It's up to you, whatever you put here. Uh, but it needs to be a unique repository name in your GitHub. So it says, we'll create a repository in your GitHub account with this name. So I'm gonna go for it. And I'm gonna save and deploy. So you can see that was step two. Now it's going to step three, your site is live. Just push your changes to GitHub. Okay, so now this is the exciting bit. So I've been forwarded to Netlify and you can see that it's doing something. It says site deploy in progress, okay? Um, and then if I scroll down from there, I can see production deploys, Oop, and then it just changed. So it's actually already published my site, but I wanna take you first to a little orientation of what this looks like in Netlify. So first of all, zealous Kepler 669F8C, that's my random name that Netlify gives my site, right? So we just gave it a, a GitHub repository name, but Netlify doesn't use that to name my site. It uses zealous Kepler 6695F8C. Uh, and that's what it actually uses to generate a random URL. But this is a URL that is alive right now. So if you right click, I'm gonna open mine in a new tab. You can see that's my new site. So I just deployed this brand new. It looks exactly like Silly Babbage, which I'll close now so it's less confusing. But right now I'm looking at Zealous Kepler 669F8C and I can share it with you all. So what I would love for people to do in the chat is to, I see some people enjoying their, um, join their random name generators. Um, go ahead and uh, put your link in there. Um, everybody should have the exact same looking site. Looks like people are Getting it. it looks like some people, um, there's no connect to GitHub tab. Uh, Shamilis, I'm sorry, I'm not sure that um, I've seen that happen before. Um, so uh, might have to do some troubleshooting in a moment. Reverend Wing, I like that. Jovial McLean. So I always feel like these um, these Netlify random name generators are like a little bit of a fortune cookie. Like sometimes when I've got like bad mojo going on with a site, I'll get like one that seems a little bit more negative. But these all are these are all are giving me giving me hope. I see uh, I see admiring Arabiata. Um, uh, oh, and then somebody already got ahead of me and changed it. 
Okay, so you're looking at this random URL and I'm actually going to show you how to change this a little bit later because I want you all to feel free to edit things. And this is a great way to keep the work that you're doing on your website sort of under wraps. You don't have to worry that anyone's going to stumble upon this URL, right? Like they're not uh, anticipating that your personal website is zealous Kepler uh, 669F8C. Uh, but that is your website. And from now on, when you work from your site locally and you push to GitHub, this website is going to update. Um, and that is kind of one of the great benefits of using Netlify is it's called continuous deployment. So anytime your source changes and you push it up to GitHub now, because we made that connection and that wiring, uh, now Netlify is going to detect those changes in your GitHub repository and it will redeploy your site and there will be no blips on the user end, nothing goes down, it's just completely seamless. So after a few minutes you might see the build finish and then when you refresh your site in the browser, it updates. So I'm going to go back to the Netlify tab. So this is a really useful tab to know what it looks like and to orient you a little bit. So I just want to share a little bit more about um, how to look at this tab. So first of all, your link is right here. And it, as I mentioned, we can change that so that it's something you'll remember. But right now I'm going to keep it um, as the random, uh, um, randomly generated URL. There's also this thing that says deploys from GitHub. Now you can hover over that and see that GitHub is a link, right? Now you can open that link in a new tab and it takes you right to the GitHub repository that that button made for you. So you can see now I'm in my Apres Hill Emily Cooper repository. So this is a nice way to be able to find immediately that repository that we just created. So you can see that you should have the exact same repository that I have here. You can see that, um, you know, I made the last updates I had made were 33 minutes ago. Uh, and there's 21 commits in there. You also have the readme, which is what we're going to be walking through today. Uh, and we're going to next step, get this going locally so that you can push and pull from your R studio uh, local installation. So keep that tab open. That's your GitHub repository. Keep your URL open uh, so that you can see what changes happen. And then go back to this Netlify tab real quick. I want you to click on, if you kind of scroll down, you'll see this production deploys and it says production main, at head published. So it's telling you the branch. So I set mine up to be uh, main as the default, which was in my um, sort of opinionated pre-work instructions, how to do that and how to make sure that that's your default branch going forward. And, um, GitHub uh, has uh, now kind of first class support for having uh, uh, a main branch um, uh, instead of a master, which was kind of um, uh, the labeling that used to be the default. So if you click on this here, this is actually a link and this takes me to the publish deploy. Um, and you will get a link for every time that you commit and push to your GitHub repository, there will be a page like this. Uh, so this happened to be my first one, but you will have one for every time you commit and push. So if you scroll down here, you can see some nice, you know, buttons here. You can preview the deploy. Uh, so that again, takes you to the deployed um, link. You can actually uh, click this little download button that will download all the files for you, which is nice. Um, if you run into an error, you can always retry the deploy. So a lot of times if I run into problems uh, on the Netlify side, I clear cache and deploy site. Uh, and you can also lock publishing to this deploy. So this is good for me to tell you now, because if you break your site um, and you can traverse back to a deploy that actually worked in Netlify, you can say, okay, walk it back. I wanna lock publishing to this deploy. Now, I wouldn't recommend that as a long-term strategy. <laughs> what we'd like to do is have your source files that are in your GitHub repository that are the most up-to-date be the ones that you're seeing when you deploy, but that's an option for you if you break things and need to make sure that your site stays up for a little while. But if you scroll down, that's the that's the good stuff. And usually when I'm troubleshooting um, anything uh, with new learners and new users, I want to take them to the deploy log. So I want you to not be scared of seeing this. So this is doing all the stuff that I told it to do. I sort of taught Netlify how to build your site for you uh, without you doing anything. So you don't need to understand all of this, but it does look good. So that's the main thing that I want you to understand from looking at this. So things are happening that are very good. Um, one thing that's happening on line 22 is that it installed Hugo version 0.80.0. And I want you to go to your repository right now. And if you look in the netlify.toml file, 
that's the file where I'm communicating to Netlify for you. So I wrote this file for you to make sure that Netlify knew exactly how to build your site. And you can see that what it's doing is it's telling Netlify from your actual source code in your GitHub repository how to build your site. So it's using Qco, which is the static site generator that we're using. It's publishing from the public directory. So it's building your site, putting it all in a single folder called public that you don't see because uh, Netlify is doing that building for you. And it's using Hugo version 0.80.0. .0. So that's one thing to, to know is that it's installing Hugo on this virtual machine in the clouds, on the server in the clouds for you. And then it's doing this Netlify build. And so this is all good. Everything's green, which is usually encouraging, not red. And so that's a good uh, heuristic to look for when you're looking at this. And then it says it's following the build command from your Netlify.toml, which is good. I wrote that for you and I made sure that it worked before we started here. And then you can see that it's going to start building your site. This is output that we're actually going to see in the console when we use the RStudio IDE and blog down. So getting familiar with how it looks is a good thing. So it's just a nice little table that tells you how many pages it, um, it built and a few other things like processed images, static files, things like that. Um, and you can see that it happened in 389 milliseconds. Um, build command completed in 446 milliseconds. Uh, then it moves on to deploying your site starting to deploy site from public. I told it to do that. Uh, site deploy was successfully initiated, Netlify build complete. And then it does some post-processing, some cleanup of cache and dependencies. Uh, and then what you're really excited to see is this little line on 108 maybe for you. Site is live with the little sparkles emoji. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and then you can see that it's pushing to this repository. So you can tell that that's where um, it thinks my, my source files are. So this is a successful deploy log and hopefully we'll see more of these in our future. If you go up to the top and go back to deploys, that's kind of where we started from. And these will rack up over time. So you'll see a lot of different um, uh, deploys there as you push to GitHub. Let me show you a different site um, that I have. Um, here's my own personal website. So you can see that I have a lot of deploys here. If I click over here, you can see that there's quite a few. I also have a few different fancy things set up, but I use this very often when I'm going through and seeing, um, seeing what happened, seeing what changed, that kind of thing. So, so I'm hoping that everybody has now the GitHub repository open that is in your GitHub. This one, mine is named Emily Cooper and I'm publishing to Zealous Kepler. And I'm gonna go back to this. So we have three tabs open right now, okay? We've got Netlify, we've got GitHub, and we've got our actual um, production site. So what we'd like to do is be able to start editing files in our studio and start adding content and kind of massaging our site out. So I'm going to do the way I clone a project um, from GitHub, but you might have a different way of doing it. So I'm hoping that you've already worked through that uh, in the pre-work. I use SSH. Um, currently, I know that was not the recommended way that I told you to do it. I told you to do HTTPS, but this works for me currently and I'm not going to break things in GitHub while I'm doing a live demo. So uh, I am going to go to the green code button and then click on the clipboard. Um, I recommended if you hadn't done this before to stick with HTTPS, which you kind of click around by uh, tabbing over those and seeing which one is highlighted pink is the one that you're on and then clicking the clipboard icon. So I'm doing SSH, but you need to do what you have practiced and works for you. And then I'm going to open up our studio. Now I just want to make sure, cause I can't see a yellow, normally I can see a yellow, um, box around what I'm sharing. Can Jonelle, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my RStudio right now? You can, okay, great. Okay, so I am running Lost Library Book. Hopefully you can see this, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm in a current site right now, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm going to go to File, New Project in RStudio. And I wanna pick a version control project. So file, new project, I'm gonna start over. File, new project, version control. And then I'm gonna choose Git because I'm trying to get a GitHub repository. And then I'm gonna paste in what's on my clipboard into that repository URL. And it automatically populates that project directory name for me. So my GitHub repository is named Emily-Cooper and my project directory name is Emily-Cooper. 
And then you want to be pretty intentional about where you create this project as a subdirectory of on your computer because you want to be able to find it later. Uh, so I happen to have um, a pretty intricate setup for things. Um, so I'm going to browse and I'm going to find I have an R sites folder. Um, one of the benefits of working at our studio is everything I use basically starts with R. I have our books, our sites, our talks. I'm going to put it in my R sites folder. There's no magic to this. It's just where you will look for it later. Um, and I will click open in new session. I recommend you do that. So I'm going to pause here for a second and uh, hope that people can give me some thumbs up emojis when you've gotten this far. If you want me to go start from our studio again at the beginning, will you give me a maybe a thumbs down. <laughs> I hate to ask for thumbs downs, but if you give me a thumbs down, I'll start from the beginning of this. Okay, I see thumbs ups, which is good. Okay, I see thumbs ups. Okay. Okay, let me check the chat. Okay, waiting still. Okay. Okay, some people are saying no. Okay, so thank you. No, that's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to close this out. And for those of you who made it there, you can take a water break. Um, I'm going to go to in our studio, file new project. And then you have these choices, new directory, existing directory, version control. Uh, and we want to do version control because we're starting from a GitHub um, project. So all of our files are up on github.com. We want to pull them down. Version control. And I'm going to click on Git to clone a project from a Git repository. So it's going to clone it locally. So it's going to just copy all those files that are sitting in that GitHub repository right now. We know they already work. We know they're already published on Netlify. So all we need to do is pull them from GitHub and make sure that GitHub knows where they should go to when we push and pull. So Git, and then I'm going to paste in my repository URL that I copied from the, um, the GitHub repository from that clipboard, copy to clipboard icon. And it populates my project directory name. I'm going to put my project as a subdirectory of one of my folders locally so I can find it again. And checkbox open in new session. Let me check the chat. Great. People seem like they're getting there. OK, perfect. So I'm going to hold my breath and going to go ahead and hit my button. So create project, boom. And it should be doing it. I Now I'm going to close out the, the project I started in because I don't need that anymore. But now I'm looking at an RStudio project, an R project in RStudio uh, that corresponds to Emily Dash Cooper. Okay. So it populated in the place that I told it to. So it's in my R sites folder. The name of the project is called Emily Cooper. And you can see it looks pretty similar over here in the file pane. Let me make this mega big. There we go. Uh, over here in the file pane, this looks pretty similar. It's actually identical to what's in our GitHub repository. So I'm actually going to um, make this, I don't want to totally make it disappear because I always have trouble with this small screen. Um, I want to show this side by side here so you can see. So in my GitHub repository, things are sorted a little bit differently, um, but we have content, we have a data folder, um, we have a layouts folder, we have a static folder, we have that themes folder. So that themes folder that I initially showed you, which is where all of the, the meat of the Hugo Apparel theme lives. That's again, a do not touch, a read only file, uh, but this is all there. Um, you can see that you have a copy of the readme.md file. And that's again, what we're gonna start following right now. Uh, you have the Netlify Tomol file. This is how we teach Netlify how to build your site. Uh, we have this rproj folder here. Um, so mine is still called IYO Apparel. Yours might be as well. So you might want to change the project name to match your, um, your actual project. I'm going to check the box here and click rename and make it match my, my folder. So I'm going to change that. Um, so that was checking the box and then clicking the rename button at the top. Uh, we have this index.rmd file, which I didn't show you earlier. This one is one, it's another no touch. You don't need to touch it. It's only got um, a little YAML in there that tells um, uh, the RStudio IDE essentially how to build your site. So it lets the RStudio IDE know that you're building a blog down site, uh, which is what we'll be using the R package that we'll be using to be able to build this. 
And we have a lot of other files that we're going to hopefully get to. Um, but I just want you to see that these are the exact same files that uh, you had before. So if you did change your R project name, you could go ahead and use that as kind of your first commit. It shouldn't change anything in your actual um, uh, deployed site. But if you checked both those boxes, you can see that I'm replacing you know, one file with another. If I click on diff, I'm going to say um, change my R project name. I'm going to commit. And when I push, you can see that it pushed to main. And then if I go over to GitHub, you should be able to see. Yeah, so now I've got emily-cooper.rproj there. So the good news is that I know that my GitHub is talking to my RStudio. Um, and now I know that these files that I'm seeing in my RStudio IDE are ones that if I change them and I push to GitHub, those will automatically be what Netlify sees. So uh, what we're looking at is the actual source files for our website. We were able to go ahead and publish it on Netlify. So it looks like this out in the real world. So how do we create that site in RStudio? So I'm going to make this really big. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to start using the blog down package. So uh, if you were unable to access the pre-work ahead of time, uh, the blog down package is installed by install packages in quotes, blog down. You would run that and make it bigger. Uh, and once you're in there, you can do a few different things with blog down loaded. So if you have the blog down package already installed, you should be able to do library blog down and not see anything print. Um, one thing you can do is you can type Hugo version, uh, open and close parentheses, and then you can check the local Hugo version that blog down is using to build your site. And if you remember right, I, uh, I taught Netlify to build your site with Hugo version 0 0.80.0. And you can see that that's actually what I'm using to build the site locally also. So this is really good news. I'll show you how to um, check those more formally later. But that's just a quick check to make sure that you have the blog down package installed and loaded. Um, so I'm going to check the chat real quick. Okay. Do other people have two R proj files? Oh, good question. So when you do change the name of it, sometimes what you need to do is over here in the RStudio IDE file pane, sometimes you have to click that little uh, arrow button, that recycle button up at the top to refresh the file listing. So if you renamed it and you're seeing two R proj files now, you might want to um, do a little refresh. And if you look in your get pane, you should be able to see that you, um, you can also refresh that get pane too, so that you can see that. Okay, so I'm hoping that everybody has the blog down package installed. Uh, anytime I open a new blog down project, the first thing I do is I go up to the RStudio add-ins, which you may not have used a package before that has add-ins, but add-ins are just ways to kind of run a function. Um, there's also usually a way to do it in the console as well, but I'm going to use this blog down add-in. So if you have the blog down package installed, this add-in should be there for you. Uh, I'm gonna use this serve site add-in and that's the thing that's going to run Hugo for me and build my site locally. So I'm going to click serve site and you can see that it does print something to my console. So I could have run blog down serve underscore site and built it as well. And it prints out some gobbledygook here. This is all stuff to tell you that it's building your site and serving it with a local server. So this is one that nobody else can see but you if you make any changes to this and you're previewing it locally. This is just your way of smell testing what you're working on, iterating on it, and seeing what it will look like when you publish it. But this is not a published site. This is a site that you're previewing in the IDE. Now you can see that it populated for me over here in this viewer pane. Um, and you know you can kind of scroll down. Now I really caution you to ever use this viewer pane um, other than for um, just a quick cursory look because it's a little bit of an out of date um, web browser. And so sometimes things can look a little bit different in the viewer pane and you might think that they look wrong. Um, so I really encourage people when they're working on a blog down site to click on this little icon. So you should see in the viewer pane up here um, and your viewer pane might be in a different place on your in your IDE, but look for um, look for a viewer. And there's this X that says remove current viewer item. Don't do that. And there's uh, broom clear all viewer items. Don't do that. Uh, what you want is this one over here. When I hover over, let's see. It says show a new window. It's got that little arrow on arrow on it. 
I'm going to click on that. And then you can see that what it does is it sends that website up to my, my normal browser. My default browser happens to be Firefox. Um, so, oops, sorry, trying to, I keep trying to move my Zoom uh, around where it's not in my way. Um, there we go. Uh, so now what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the exact same site that Netlify is showing me as deployed, but this is my local preview. So you can see here, this is my telltale sign, localhost 4321. This is just a local version, but it's the local version of the same site, which is great. And you can click around on it. It's a fully functional website. It should work the exact same way that your site works when you deploy it. Uh, so click around. Make sure for yourself that you're seeing things. Images look like they're populating. All of the different sections are there. So we should at this point have a fully functioning website that you're looking at. And from here, I'm going to start working through the uh, README that's in the GitHub repository. So if you go back to your GitHub repository, uh, you can see that I have a little bit of information about the Apero theme. We've already created it. Now where I wanna start is with an, a little bit of um, site configuration. So we're gonna open up one of the files and this is a file that I would generally only touch when I'm first setting up my site or making kind of larger changes. It's not one where every time you're going to edit it. But we're gonna start configuring the site. I'm gonna go back to my actual website. And at this point, usually when I'm working in blog down, I, um, I kind of ignore that viewer pane altogether and I'm going to make my our studio a little smaller. I'm going to kind of move some windows around here. There we go. Because I want you to be able to see things as I'm changing them. So what I'd like for you to do is in your R Studio to open up a file called config.toml file. And this is what's called the site configuration file. So if you open up that file, it's a pretty long file. Um, if you scroll to the bottom, about 159 lines. Um, it's written in Tomal, which is Tom's obvious markup language, which I don't know why they all have to be named something that sounds sort of condescending because it's not totally obvious, but it's similar to YAML. So if you're familiar with our markdown and you've worked with YAML before, it's another way of specifying key and value pairs. Um, so this is my way of giving you variables that I'm listening to when I designed the Hugo Apparel theme. So there's a couple of these in here that are specific to Hugo in general. So we can control how Hugo works through these variables. And then, but then some of these are variables that I've made up that I added here because I wanted to give you a way to change something in the theme. So I said, okay, I'm going to add um, a key here, maybe give it a default value, and then you can change things as you go. So maybe the first thing you could do is give your site a title. So um, you can say, you know, personal website of Emily Cooper. I'm going to leave that because I'm keeping mine as Emily Cooper, but you could change that. Um, the title doesn't show up on anywhere. So when we save this, um, it's not going to change anything that you're viewing yet. This is actually populating some of the metadata that goes into your website. So Google search engines or when you share it, for example, these things are important. So don't leave them blank and don't leave them with the default values. So change the title and the author. Um, I'll come back to some of these other ones later, but know that these are all set up to just work for you. They should be good to go. I'm going to scroll down to where it says params and params for me is on line 30. It should be line 30 for you as well. This is actually where you know you're starting to talk to me. So this is the variables that I have given you. Everything else is um, Hugo, but params is something where I've given you specific variables for the theme that I've developed. So you can see that it has an org name, our studio. Emily looked, worked at Savoir, I think, um, org local. I'm gonna do Paris. Uh, description, um, that ends up going into the meta tags as well, but you can change that. There's a way to change the favicon, which is the little bitty icon in your tab browser. I'll talk to, a little bit about that later. Um, you can change some simple things, like you can make nav all caps. Right now, you can see that about blog projects, those are all, all caps right now. I could change that to false, for example. There, and you can see that that's changed in the browser. There's a knob for putting your social links in the header versus in the footer. I have it false in the header, but if you change that to true and hit save, you'll see that it gets kind of sandwiched in there over to the right. I don't love that, but it's there for people who want it there. 
I'll turn that to false. Uh, I do have social and footer. It'll look a little dip, bit different on the main, on the home page versus on the other pages, but it's, it's right there for you. Um, Twitter username, you can do that. What I'd like to focus on first though is line 51. So this is a built-in color theme. So this is the thing that's going to make your site immediately different from anybody else's site using the same Hugo theme. So I had one of my uh, past interns and now a, a data science educator at our studio, Desiree de Leon, um, help me make some built-in color themes that look just nice and meet minimum accessibility requirements for color contrast so that you can use these and feel confident that you're not going to stumble into a place where your text is not visible um, and maybe you forgot to check uh, that maybe the link text was going to meet color contrast contrast guidelines. So these are some built-in color themes that you can really quickly use and change. So I started you off here with violet, but you can try out any of these, see how they look. Here's forest. I liked this one a lot. Um, this was Desiree's green moment. So you can see that everything changes. Text colors, background colors, um, uh, the background of the site, sidebar colors, everything updates. So that's forest. Uh, grayscale is nice if you're trying to go for less colorful, just white and black, uh, pretty simple, but it looks nice. You can see that everything updates immediately. Uh, peach is actually one of my favorites. I almost use peach for my own site. Um, it's kind of fun. You click around, it's a little bit like kind of rusty colored and I like it. Uh, plum kind of a little bit cooler toned. There's a little bit of green in there. You click around, you can see things changing. Oh, I'll go to the contact page. You can see that everything updates. Uh, Poppy is our orange moment. So that's nice as well. Sky. Oops. Sky is kind of a blue. Okay, I already showed you violet. That was the one we started with and water. Water is kind of a teal one. So play around with themes while you're at it. Um, and, uh, and while you're playing around with those locally, I want to tell you a little bit more about what is actually happening under the hood when you do this. So what's happening under the hood is that we've used the serve site add-in uh, with the blog down package. And so what it's doing is it's creating a server locally for you and it's listening to any changes that you make in your actual files. And so you can see launching the server via the command, serving the directory, and it's going basically in the background the whole time. And so anytime that you make changes like what we're doing right now, they'll propagate immediately to your, um, to your local site. And this also includes changes to content, but changes to things visual like the theme uh, are also easy to see with this as well. Now, if I wanted to, I could push this to GitHub and change my deployed site in not too long. So I'm actually gonna do that right now to get you used to making some changes here. Uh, another thing that you can do really quickly, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, my uh, like my content is not changing in the uh, like you know uh, when I change colors or uh, the my author name uh, it doesn't get reflected. Okay, let's try going. I'm going to stop my server. Okay, so now I don't have a local server started, so I go to blog down serve site and I push it into a browser window. Are you able to get that far? Yeah, but- You're looking at the local the host site? I, I'm sorry, I just wanna confirm it. Before I move on, if you could just confirm for me that you're looking at local host in your browser yeah. locally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so then when you change things in your config toml file, nothing's updating? No. Are you hitting save? Yeah. So you're doing something like this and hitting save. Yeah. Yeah. Is it updating in your R Studio viewer? No. It's not? Is anything printing to your console? No. Did you see this print when you hit the serve site add-in? Yes. Okay. Um, 
I don't have a great idea for why this is happening. It looked like there was other people who might be not seeing changes as well. I think there are a few other who have the same. Looks like um, two other people. Are you all experiencing the same thing where when you serve site um, and then you make changes and save it, nothing's happening? So Alison, I yeah. guess I figured out something. I forgot yes. to install the uh, you know uh, Hugo version. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm... sorry. My daughter just screamed. <laughs> what? <laughs> mine, mine is sleeping right now. Yeah, sorry. I just heard mom, so I I couldn't hear. What did you say? You forgot? Uh, I'm saying that uh, I because I did not install the uh, Hugo version uh, in in the blog down, and that was the reason I was not able to do it. But now when oh, I'm okay. So, so checking the Hugo version is pretty important right now. So yeah, so good question. So because I did it the way I did it, you may not have had Hugo installed. So thank you very much for pointing that out. So you don't have Hugo installed. So install Hugo. Um, you can do version equals question mark 0 0.8.0. Um, it looks like the defaults are what we want. So do install Hugo for those of you who are not seeing this. So um, uh, I will file an issue for us to not print that we're launching the server via the command if you don't have Hugo installed. Uh, install Hugo version. Uh, so this was part of the um, the setup instructions too for those of you who, um, who might be feeling uh, like you don't have that. So here is the install Hugo instructions. So I'll put these in the chat for those of you who missed that part. All right. Please, would you show us the version? The version? 0 0.8, 0 0.0. 0. Can you see my screen right now? It's at the very bottom. Okay. All right. So now if you do that, you should be able to change the theme and you should be able to serve your site and see that things change. Uh, if you scroll down, for those of you who are able to get this working, there's also a custom um, text font family and custom heading font family. I'm sorry for the screaming, if you can hear that. <laughs> We're having lunch troubles. Uh, so you can change uh, fonts to any of these options that are available on this uh, in this um, list here. So I'm going to really quickly change mine to bitter. That's one of the options. And um, I'm going to do bitter for both. So you can see that my site changed. And if I go over to my local site, you can see that everything changes as well. So I'm going to go forth. I've only made these few changes, but I am going to commit these. So I'm going to say update my site configuration. I'm going to commit and I'm going to push it. Move my zoom controls. And now I'm going to go back to sort of like my dashboard of browser windows. Um, if I go back to Netlify and if I refresh that page there, you can see that it detected that change. It detected my rproj name change and published that, but that didn't change anything about the site. Oops. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's saying processing uh, and it, it tags it with my um, my commit message that I just sent to GitHub. So update my site configuration. If I click on that, you can see that it did all the same good stuff that it did before. All the green messages are there and my site is live. So uh, it says it's finishing the processing, the build request. It should all be there though. And now if I go back to my browser window, the actual one where my real site is that is live and shareable, if I click the refresh button, it should be forest colored and with a different font. Uh, you can see if I click around now, it looks just like my live preview. So it didn't take that long to, um, to build an update. Let's see, it says deploy site completed in 1.3 seconds and the build completed in 596 milliseconds. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break right here. It's 11.59. I'd like to take a 10 minute uh, water bathroom break. Um, and if you're interested in to keep toying with this, you can keep playing with your site, push, um, push to GitHub and then watch it populate to Netlify. And we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes to start editing our site. And I'll start uh, responding to the chat questions.
I'll make one more change and then commit it to get for those who are telling me they, they don't like get that's okay. <laughs> I don't love it either, but it works all right. Okay, so I'm going to go scroll down um, and change a social icon. So I'm going to, uh, I happen to know Font Awesome, so I don't need to look it up, but I provided the documentation here for you to find other icons. Um, I know that I can provide a, uh, a YouTube um, link. I know that that works. And then I'm just going to youtube.com. I do that and I go back to my local preview site. You should see that little player icon there and uh, it'll automatically take you to the link that I provided. Okay, so I just made a silly little change just to test things out. I'm going to do git commit, close that out. Check the box. You can see that I just made a silly change just to change one icon. Change an icon, that's my commit message. I hit commit, and push, and it goes. Then I go back to Netlify building. I watch it build, it's going. I can also go back to GitHub. I can hit refresh, you can see that the latest changes that change one icon. In the Netlify tab, it's working, it's working, it's working. Site is live. Let's go over here. And what I should see is that that GitHub icon is replaced by a YouTube icon. So let's hit refresh. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go take a restroom break and get fill up my water and I'll be back at 1210.
All right. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Uh, it sounds like for some of you all, this is a crash course in GitHub too. So I apologize for that. That's never pleasant to do. Um, but maybe it's good to kind of rip the Band-Aid off now. Um, if you want to have a functioning website that um, that you can update and maintain, I really recommend uh, using Git and GitHub for that. And in a lot of ways, I actually think that making a blog down site and making a site that you deploy on Netlify is a really great um, way to start getting used to Git and GitHub. So I'm going to do, um, I did it uh, twice before. So I'm going to do, or I've done three pushes now. Um, I'm going to do it one more time just to make sure that we're all caught up in the same place. Um, and as a refresh, the links that I have open are my Netlify kind of landing page, my GitHub repository. So you can see that I've made a few commits while we've been together. I changed my R project name. I updated my site configuration and I changed one icon. Uh, and what we've seen so far is that it propagated to this website that Netlify is currently publishing for me. And this is my local version of the same site. So I'm going to um, change my theme real quick locally so that it's a little bit easier when I flip back right. and forth. We oh. cannot see your screen. Oh my gosh, thank you. Sorry, I turned it off briefly while I was texting my husband. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, so um, here was my commit messages. So I changed one icon, updated my site configuration, and changed my R project name. And now I'm going to go to my live preview and I'm going to change the theme real quick just so you can see um, the difference when I go back and forth. I'll choose water because it's a little bit different. Okay, so now you'll see that my live preview is going to be the water theme, whereas my deployed is, I think, using forest. So, uh, so there's a lot more knobs to turn in this configuration file, the config.toml file. Um, it controls your social icons. Um, and there's a blog post about that. It's linked to in your readme about how to change those. We changed one of them quickly. Um, but that's definitely one of the personalization elements that you can do. Um, it does also affect the menu. So this is the place starting at line 102 for me, where I can start to affect what goes on in the top nav bar there. So uh, you can see that I have uh, about is the first one, and that's what the weight stands for. There's blog, projects, talks. And if you don't want to blog, if that's not a thing that you want to do, you simply can remove that menu header from here. You can just take that block um, out of this and add it back in later if you wanted it. Uh, and then we've got projects and talks. There's also a footer. So that's where I have currently my license and my contact form. And then the stuff that's below, um, I really recommend uh, if, you, if you care about privacy and you want to make sure that you're following best practices, uh, you can look at this link about Hugo and the GDPR. Uh, and I've tried to populate um, this sample repo with all the things that you would probably want to do. Um, I have kept Google Analytics, but it does anonymize the IP and respects do not track, uh, but you can turn it off completely if you like. So um, I put that there mainly as a placeholder to let you know that these are all things that you can tweak if you really wanna dig into it. And there's some pretty good documentation about how to do so. So I've tried to set you up with some basic privacy here, but know that those are all um, options that you can change. And those are things that um, Hugo provides for you. So Hugo um, had a pretty big push of features to respect uh, GDPR and make it easier for Hugo theme authors to respect GDPR. So I'm going to move on from the site configuration. I'm going to go back to the readme uh, and point out that we changed the, um, the fonts. We changed a little bit of the color themes. We learned how to do that. You can read full docs um, about both of these. They're linked to from the readme. So there's a full doc on fonts. If you wanna really get into your font choices, I've built in some nice ones for you, I think, but uh, you can also read up about how to customize those further. Uh, and I've given you a few different options, actually. The themes is just one of them, but there's a few different options for picking color themes. Uh, and there's a blog post that I wrote about that as well on the doc site. So lots of different ways you can go to make a totally different looking site. Um, and then social icons, I barely touched on just now, but there is um, a blog post on it in the docs. So you can read the full docs here. Uh, that was in the configuration tomo file. Uh, 
So in the rest of our time together, what I'd love to get you oriented to is pages uh, and sections here. So it's really the meat of your, of your site. And it's a lot of what Hugo really offers and makes, um, and makes it really powerful, but also possibly um, kind of confusing at first. So let me check the chat real quick. See colors, Allison, you're not sharing anymore. I got it. Okay. Can we change the icon? Uh, you can. Um, that's in the configuration Tomo file. That's, um, uh, I think it's logo. Um, so you can change that. Um, okay. Looks like people are getting used to pushing and pulling. And so that's great. Um, if you haven't uh, read through Happy Get With R, I really recommend um, walking through it. That was in the, I tried to pick out some very helpful things to do in the pre-work, but really the whole book is magical. So if you're new to Get and GitHub, it gives you some good exercises and things to get practice. Um, so if you're not familiar with how to do this stuff and it's not um, it's not jiving with the how you think or work about um, with things, then um, I really recommend kind of trying to get your feet wet there. Um, but also remember that it's not a big deal if you bork your site <laughs> with Git or GitHub. Um, at this point, you're just working with a template site. You can recreate this um, anytime you want and get back to a working functioning site. All right, so I'm going to close out config tomal and I'm going to focus on, I'm trying to move my browser windows around, so they're out of the way. I am going to start looking at content. So the content folder is where everything lives and that's the main place where when you're maintaining your site and adding new content, that's where you're going to go. Um, so there's a few different sections here. I'm going to start with blog um, because it's one of the simpler ones. Um, when you click on blog, you go into a file structure where you see this uh, markdown file, uh, underscore index.md, and then you see some folders here. Uh, and this is uh, exactly um, what you would expect to see in a Hugo site because in Hugo, the motto is everything is a page. And so everything that you see in your built site is actually a page. Uh, it's actually a markdown page. And so we use YAML in maybe a different way than you're used to if you're used to working with our markdown in the sense that your YAML is your way of providing variables to Hugo. Um, and that's your way of changing the words that you see on the screen. And Hugo is taking care of plopping them in the right layout file. So you can think of Hugo as providing a template and pulling from the information you're providing in your markdown files and in your YAML and plopping it in there. Um, so for the most part, when you're trying to change how things look or work, you're steering around by changing things in your YAML. Now the name of the file actually matters here. So don't ever change this one. It's underscore dot or underscore index MD. Uh, and that one happens to be a section configuration. So that one will always be at the root of a new section. And it's your way of configuring how that section looks. So you can see that I have a title, a description, an author. All of these things are maybe expectable, but you might not necessarily think of them as being for a section. Um, but this is how I can populate what you end up seeing on this page when I go to blog. Um, so you can see that um, uh, I'm showing the post thumbnail, for example, true. I'm showing the author byline here, true. I'm showing the post date, true. Um, and I have a specific layout here. I've given you three choices. You can choose list, list sidebar, or list grid. I'm gonna change this to list right now and show you what changes. So what changes in my live preview is that it shows you kind of a little bit of a simpler list without that sidebar. Uh, and you can take away those thumbnails too. You can set the post thumbnail to false. And I think it still looks pretty nice. I'll bring the thumbnails back, hit true. So this is a list. You can also do a grid. Oops, GERD, that will not work, grid. Now you can see all of my posts show up in a grid. And then I'm gonna go back to the sidebar, which is where I started with. Okay, bring it back into the screen. So you have those three layouts to work with for setting up your listing page for a blog. And why is it called a listing page? It's called a listing page because it's listing all of the pages in that section. So it's giving the structure and it's looking nice and it, it's pulling a nice image. It's pulling the title, um, a little snippet, the author name and the date. Um, and it's giving you basically this little preview of each individual page that's in this section. 
So if you look in here, I've, I used a, an interesting uh, lorem ipsum generator um, based on Simpsons episode, Star Wars and Arrested Development. Um, so if you click on any of those folders within blog, those would be where you'd put your posts. And um, so this first one is a .r markdown post. Uh, and you can see that it looks a little bit more like a normal R markdown um, uh, document for you in the sense that it has YAML at the top and then it has stuff inside, right? So you're used to probably writing like this and working in documents like this. And this is a typical post that you would knit and share with other people. I'm gonna check the chat real quick because I see six. So I hope that there's not an emergency that everybody is. Oh, somebody got their first ever push to get via our studio. Wow. <laughs> What a journey. <laughs> All right. So that definitely warrants celebration. Um, all right, so uh, so this is a listing page. And when I click on Lorem Simpson, for example, that takes you to an actual individual page. Um, so these are single pages. And in Hugo, it's useful to realize that we have separate templates for a listing page. So a page where you can see everything, it's sort of like a menu. Um, and then you have single pages as well. Um, so the next feature I'm going to show you about Hugo Apero is actually meant just for teaching. It's not meant for publishing at all, but it's this little thing that I've called the Hairbot Cat. And this was my way of trying to teach this Hugo directory structure a little bit easier. I have put it in every single page of content in this example site that I've given you. And so what happens is if you click on the little Hairbot Cat, you see it says, use me to find your way in your website. So it says, here I am. So you can see that it's telling you that the source of what you're looking at is in content blog, then it's inside this folder. And then the file that you're looking at is index.markdown. And then it says, here's my R markdown source file. So it actually knows that you knitted this file. And so the actual source file is index.r markdown. And then it tells you, you'll wanna edit this file, then re-knit to see the changes take effect in your site preview. To remove this little here bot cat, you can remove this uh, piece of text there here. Um, and then it also tells you some metadata, some information. It says my content section is blog, my layout is single. Uh, and then it also tells you what images are in this page bundle. So you can see that it's found a featured.jpg image. And the featured one is kind of a, um, a a secret, not really a secret, but it's a way that Hugo themes use to uh, populate that nice little thumbnail image. So if you name that image with the keyword featured in it, it will show up as the thumbnail image in the listing page. So I'd like for everybody to take a few minutes and look through the posts that I've given you. Every single one of them has a Herebot cat. And I would love it if you could try to remove this code, the here code from maybe one or two posts. See if you can find the post and see if you can change it. I'm gonna do it live so you can watch my screen if you'd like. Um, but my idea is really that I want you to just kind of be able to find the file that is populating the thing that you're looking at in your local browser. And if you wanted to make more changes, you can change any of the text, you can delete all of this, you can make a different plot, you can try out different things um, and realizing the file that you're looking at in your live preview versus the file that you edit, I think is one of the most useful things to learn about Hugo and blog down because it's usually um, um, a good starting point if you're seeing something unexpected to try to find out where the source is for that file. So I'm going to go in, I'm in Lorem Arrested Development and I'm previewing Lorem Arrested Development. Uh, so you can see that uh, it's previewing the index.markdown file, but the actual source is an R markdown file. So I'm actually knitting it and taking it from an R markdown to a markdown file. And then that's what you're previewing. So if I make any changes here, if I don't knit, if I just delete that here code and I save, nothing should change. And you see nothing changes. And that's because I have not knit yet. Now, if I click that knit button, you should see my little here bot cat disappear. Takes a second, it's processing. And then you can see that the preview updated and it took that away. I'm gonna to try to add something else here. Am I where I think I am? <laughs> now again, if I hit save, nothing's happening and that's because I've set up your site to do that. If I knit, 
You can see that it populates, am I where I think I am? Okay, um, and this happens to be an R markdown file. So that means that I can actually use R in here as well. So uh, I'm going to use a package that you may not have installed. I'm going to use Palmer Penguins. Um, and uh, let's do a glimpse of penguins. And again, if I had saved, nothing's going to happen um, because I'm actually previewing the markdown file. Uh, I have to knit to be able to create that. Oh, and I forgot the plier. And this, that was actually a really good simulation of why I've made it so that uh, it does not automatically um, knit your files whenever you save, because I find that's really helpful to be able to work on uh, posts that have R code and have this, have the knitting be intentional. So um, I made Hugo Apero so that people could edit it more easily. And I made the site for you so that you could edit things more easily and change things in your site um, and not have, um, not have errors when it's it's difficult to debug sometimes when you can't tell if it's an error in your post or in your Hugo site or something else. Uh, so I like to be able to knit with intention. So keep in mind that whenever you're working in a .r markdown file or a .rmd file, that's the thing that Blogdown is actually giving you is the ability to do that. But you need to knit intentionally in this site. So you can see that now it's loading the Palmer Penguins data set and it's showing me um, uh, the output there um, from dplyr glimpse. So I can change this file. Um, I'd love for you to play around and see if you can change anything else. You're also welcome to try playing around with that underscore index.md file. Uh, you can change the layout, for example. Um, since I'm in the list sidebar layout, I could change this, you know, a sidebar for Emily Cooper's thoughts, maybe. For Emily Cooper's thoughts. Maybe I'll change this. I have a lot of thoughts. And then maybe I'll make this Emily Cooper. This is in the underscore index.md file. So predicting where that's going to change things, if I go back to the blog listing page, if I change anything in this underscore index.md file, it should populate there. So a sidebar for Emily Cooper's thoughts. And I don't have to knit here because this is just an MD file. This is a markdown file. So everything I do there is automatically integrated. Uh, and there's more documentation uh, um, in the in the readme about some of these things. Um, so that is um, a preview of how to use the blog section. Now all sections kind of work similarly in the sense that every section gets configured by that underscore index.md file. And then every section has pages associated with it, the single pages. Those are all in folders called page bundles where there's a markdown file and then maybe image files or even a data file, any local files that you would need to be able to depend on. Uh, you put those in the same page bundle as well. Okay, I see 12 chats. So I'm gonna check real quick and make sure. Is there a difference between a .rmd and a .r markdown file? Yes, there is, Martine, that is a really good question. Um, uh, .rmd files, it's a little bit in the weeds, but .rmd files will knit to HTML by default. Um, and I prefer to knit to markdown. Um, so uh, I have configured your site so that you don't have that option because Hugo Apero as a theme was built to make markdown a first class citizen. And that's because Hugo um, uh, works better with markdown input um, in my opinion. So I've made it a little bit opinionated and, um, and made it so that if you're working with .r markdown, you can knit to markdown, uh, but if you work with .rmd also, it will work um, to markdown as well. And the reason for that, there's a blog post that I have on this um, about doing your R profile. Um, I have you in this R profile in your project root, I have you in full markdown mode. So blog down method equals markdown. Um, for, for me, this allows me as a Hugo theme author to take advantage of some of the things that I think Hugo does really well. Um, and that includes automatic detection of table of contents and um, syntax highlighting and a few other things that I like to be able to depend on as a Hugo theme author. So I've made it that way for you. You can change that to HTML if you'd like. Um, in my experience, I've had a blog down site now for three years. I have very rarely needed the pandoc features that come with the .html um, output. Usually my content um, might be more, uh, not as advanced as other people's. So I don't really depend on that that much. Okay, so 
Uh, we talked about listing layouts. Um, there's also a way to configure that list sidebar. We changed mine a little bit. So I made it a sidebar for Emily Cooper's thoughts. And then we edited some single pages um, and there's a little bit more documentation in this as well. Um, and you can change any single page the way it looks. Let me open up one of my Lorem Ipsum site. Um, uh, let's see, let's do Lorem Ipsum Star Wars. Um, I'm gonna change that to single sidebar. And let's go to Lorem Star Wars and watch it happen. I'm also gonna remove the here. And then because I'm dealing with just a .md file, if I just hit save, it's gonna automatically populate. So when I hit save, you can see that things changed and it gave me a little sidebar on the right there. Um, and this is, there's no R code in this. That's why I'm just working with a, a markdown file. Um, you can include markdown posts, R markdown posts. Uh, you can mix and match those. You don't always need to do R markdown if you're not gonna be using R, if you're mainly using it to write down some thoughts um, and put together um, maybe some resources for yourself and links, then you don't need uh, to necessarily always work in a .rmd or a .r markdown file. Uh, those are for if you want to have code also. Okay. Oh. So uh, another thing that's kind of nice about this theme, I think, is that I've built in the ability to have um, external resources uh, related to any page, like a slide deck, a YouTube video, or a GitHub repository, things like that. I'll show you that in action on the actual, um, on my preview site. So if you go to projects, so up at the top nav bar, we were in blog before, if you go over to projects and if you click on Palmer penguins, you can see an example of those little buttons there. Um, so this is my way of kind of keeping track of all the links and all the bookmarks that I often um, can have when I'm working on something, a project or a talk or um, a blog post. A lot of times you wanna centralize the link somewhere and, and somewhere that's very conspicuous for the reader and kind of call it out a little bit. Um, and that's, that's for functionality for yourself or for other people. So here with the Palmer Penguins, I'm uh, linking to the Package Down website. I'm linking to the source code for the package and I'm linking to a blog post um, uh, about the Palmer penguins getting on CRAN, which was a really exciting moment for us. Now, if you wanted to change this, um, you can use my Herebot cat. Um, so click on him and you can see that here I am, I'm in content project penguins index.md. And to remove me, delete that line inside this file. My content section is project. My layout is single sidebar, which we can see there. And you can see the images in the page bundle um, that it's finding. So it's finding a featured image, but it's finding a hex image. Um, and there's some notes about what it's doing there. Uh, so let's change that. Let's maybe add a link, change a link. So what I would do is I would go over to the file that it tells me I need to edit to change it. So content project penguins, I'm gonna go to index.md. And here you can see the links, how it's formatted. So it says links, and then these are the same links that um, the same uh, icons and icon packs are available that you used for your social links. So again, I have these memorized because I use them a lot. You'll need to look at the documentation to figure out which links um, or which icons you want to use for different things. Um, but let's say I wanted to change this one to Twitter. So I happen to know that in the, the Font Awesome brand icon pack, there's a Twitter icon. So, uh, and then I happen to know, right, I think Allison Horst's Twitter handle is, is that. Um, so if I click save, you should see my previous code button change into a Twitter icon. Oh, and I didn't change the name of it. Tweet at Allison Horst. There. Now let's see if I guessed right. Nope, <laughs> that is not Allison Horst. Let's see. Ah, it's underscore. Okay. That poor person probably gets tagged a lot in Palmer Penguins related <laughs> excitement. <laughs> okay. All right, so there's Allison Horst. Uh, so you can do this for any type of content. I've enabled it um, because I find this really useful. It's one of my favorite features of uh, different themes that I've used in the past. Um, so uh, adding links uh, to things should be relatively easy. I'm gonna remove the Herebot cat. There you go. 
Uh, and there's some instructions here for how to pick your icon and your icon pack. And then there's also a, um, a larger um, blog post that was linked up in the social links area where it talked about how to do that as well. Uh, and then you can also customize that page sidebar content. So if you do choose that single sidebar, like what we're looking at here, you can customize everything that you see there. Um, and that's through uh, a few different mechanisms. I'm not gonna get too much in the weeds of that. Um, the main thing to realize is that everything is populating from your YAML in your markdown files. So whether you're working with um, a section, like an underscore index.md file, or you're looking at an individual page, all of the YAML is your way of communicating with the Hugo Apparel theme and making uh, different words show up, different links, different things show up on the pages that you see. So we have about 20 minutes left. I wanna make sure that we get to the home page and the about page, because those are things that are really high payoff now that you hopefully have a little bit of an understanding of the structure of um, those other sections, the blog um, uh, projects and talks works the same way. Uh, we can go back and look at some weird ones. So the weird sections are the home page and the about page. So those are ones where they're not necessarily gonna work like the other sections in the site, but they're ones that you probably won't be touching as often and adding new content necessarily. So I'm going to head over to the home page. So the home page is populated by content underscore index.md. So let me go back to content and find that underscore dot uh, md underscore index.md. So you can see that I have a title, a subtitle. Um, this is uh, my personal website. You can see that I have an image linked here, so you can add different images. Now, where those images go um, is in your static folder in the root. So I've populated static for you with the image folder already, and you can see that that's where revoir.jpg is, okay? So let's say we wanted to change that. Um, let's change it to unicorn megaphone. And then remember that the um, extension has changed as well. It's .png. And then I'm also going to make the image on the left false. So that means it's going to be on the right, uh, but it had to be a Boolean. Uh, and let me go back to the, the preview. I want you to see it as it changes. OK. So you're going to see a unicorn with a megaphone. <laughs> you're going to see the image is going to be on the right. Um, text align left. Let's make that true. Um, we're showing the social links. I'll keep those. We'll show the action link. So this read more is the action link. Um, it's going to the about page, um, which I like. And the action label is read more. And then this is the HTML for a symbol, the, the little arrow symbol that you're seeing there. Um, it's a text right now. There's also the option to have a button. Let's see if I do button, how it looks. And if I hit save, everything should update. So let's see. There we go. So now we have a unicorn with a megaphone. Uh, we changed the description. I made this little read more a button instead of just text, um, but everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, so that is how you would uh, customize your homepage in the Hugo Apparel theme. Uh, so I've given you a few knobs to be able to change things. I personally like being able to have a homepage that's a little bit simple and streamlined with not a lot of stuff going on, and then be able to dig deeper into getting to know someone with dedicated sections like the about page and blog and projects and talk. Um, and for me, the, the labeling of these menu items, um, I think it's nice to kind of have a little bit of a standard and not to get too creative, not to get too long with them, um, but to give people a taste of, um, you know, what you're working on and the things that you, the thing, the types of projects and things that you work on and think about. Um, so I like keeping this to less than five up in the top nav bar. Um, and I like about being a first one. Um, I think I remember one of my friends when I first taught um, blog down and using the Hugo academic theme called it the scroll of death um, because the demo site is just so long for the Hugo academic theme. Um, uh, and that ends up being the homepage. It's intended to be one where you could have a single page, but I did not design a Paro that way. So it, it will never be a single page. Um, I really wanted a simple landing page that isn't overwhelming and it lets you put an image on there and then allows you to kind of dive deeper. So the actual homepage is not very complicated. That's what it looks like. I'm going to check on the chat real quick. About I switched from blog down. 
to distill because it just seemed easier. <laughs> Hugo Paris seems easier. Um, so Enrico, that's a really good question. I love distill. Um, I'm obviously an author on distill and we made the theming a lot easier. So hopefully you could use a, um, a theming system with distill to uh, to customize it. I'll, I'll put the, um, the site up here. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with distill, um, this is a distill site, but there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, uh, and let's see if I go to the reference page, we have our new package down site. If you go to examples there, I'll throw these in the, um, in the chat because this is helpful to see. These are kind of different uh, people's ways of using distill. So these are all the kinds of different examples. So like, you know, um, this person, Michael Clark, gosh, he amazes me. This is a distill site still, but it looks totally different, right? So you can do all of this um, now with the custom themer. He did it the, the hard way before we made the easy way, but you can make sites like that. So um, I think if you're used to working with distill and you like it and it gives you the layouts that you want, um, the main restriction for distill is that you're going to have to write um, your own HTML for any other um, additional types of uh, content. So this is Miles McBain's site, for example, his distill site. And he has talks. This is just a simple list that he's done, and that's great. I, I like it a lot. It's very um, clear. Uh, he has, you know, oops, I think that might be taking me to a different place. Uh, he has an about page. I did add um, in the distill package, we added the ability to have a postcards page because I really wanted people to be able to have an about page in their. Um, in their distill sites. So you can now have a proper about page. I don't believe Miles Miles has this um, about page here, but uh, let's see if I go to my blog post on this. Um, you can add postcards now as a um, as an about page in distill. So I think that gets you pretty, pretty far. If you do distill, you do a themer and you do, um, uh, a postcards. Uh, having said that, if you had already kind of climbed the blog downhill, which is understanding Hugo and um, uh, getting used to how blog down works, then um, I, I'm happy to continue using blog down because for me, it gives me more flexibility in the kinds of content that I can share. And, um, and I obviously made my own theme <laughs> to make it the way that I want it to. I also tried to make it useful for other people. So I tried to incorporate a lot of the features that um, people seem to really enjoy in other themes, but it definitely does give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the layouts and the kinds of things you can add. So this is my own um, Apero site, which I finally merged in this week um, in an effort to have camaraderie with you all. It's a work in progress, but um, I really love it. And uh, I think it just, um, I think blog down and Hugo underneath it, uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility. So it really kind of just depends on what you want to maintain um, and, uh, and, and what you feel like learning. But I feel like if you've already learned blog down and Hugo, then you're, you've got a lot of the hard part down. Um, so, so that's where I would fall on that spectrum. Um, so we've changed the home page. Um, let's tackle the about page. The about page actually uh, takes a little bit of work. Uh, there is uh, there's a blog post about how to tackle the home page as well on the Hugo Apero doc site, which I linked to. So customizing your home page, there's a little walkthrough for how to do that. Um, and then if you scroll down uh, in the readme, I have the about page as well. Now the about page is actually a little bit unique because it populates from the YAML front matter in four markdown files. So there's one that you've become familiar with now that's the section configuration file. But then there's also individual um, index.md files within a header folder, a main folder, and a sidebar folder. And I did that to make it more clear um, when you're editing things, um, what you're editing. So if I go to this about tab, this is the header, this upper part here, and you can choose to not have that as well. You don't have to have that. Uh, this is main, and then this is the sidebar. Uh, so those are the files that we're going to edit right now. And there's also a blog post again about um, uh, changing the about page more. So I'm really quickly though, going to commit and push to GitHub to show that workflow one more time. So I'm gonna go to get, well, first I'm gonna show you the Git pane. I've changed a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so I've changed, um, uh, I added a, uh, a plot. That's what you're seeing here, that PNG file. Um, I edited my penguins uh, index.md. I edited, edited the Star Wars file. 
um, and I re-knitted a file. So I edited the R markdown file and the markdown file. And then I've changed a bunch of other things as well, the configuration Tomo file, the R profile file. So I am going to try to really quickly do, um, do some informative commit messages here. And I'm gonna show you a bunch of pushes all at once. So this is sort of like the, uh, the I'm comfortable with get now and I, I want to, um, do piecemeal pushes. Now, one caution is that when you push, I would wait to push until the end um, after you do all these commits because Netlify is going to build every time you push. Um, so every change that it detects in your source file. So you may just wanna do a bunch of commits and then push. Um, so you don't always have to do commit and then push. You can commit a few times and then push everything all at once. So add note about HTML method mode commit. So it just kind of goes away, but it's staged. It's not being, it hasn't been sent up to github.com yet. Um, changing more site config options. That's the config tomo file commit. Um, oh, here's my home page. Home page with unicorn megaphone commit. Here is customizing my blog sidebar or listing sidebar. Uh, these file changes, I also, okay, so I, oh, from RM here and add penguins. Okay, we're getting there. Penguins, I changed one of my icons and button links to project page. And then finally, oh, Star Wars is now single sidebar layout. RM here, I think I RM'd here, yep, I did. Okay, so I have all these commits there, okay? But if I go to GitHub right now, you shouldn't see any of those. I should still be at 24 commits, okay? So let's go back to my R Studio, and I'm going to click on that little get thing and I'm gonna push my branch. So I'm gonna push all of those commits that I just did up to GitHub. So let's watch what happens. So I push, that's when it actually talks to GitHub. It has sent them uh, up to main. Let's click here. How many more did I do? Oh, now I'm at 31 commits. When I refresh, you can see that all of those commits populated here. Here's change one icons. That's where I started from. And then I added the note up to Star Wars is not a single sidebar layout. And then let's go over to Netlify. Let's click refresh. So you can see that the last production deploy that Netlify had was the change one icon commit. Uh, and now um, it is going off of my latest batch of commits. So when I pushed, it triggered Netlify and Netlify said, oh wait, now I hear, I hear some action going on in that GitHub repository. Let's fire up this Hugo engine and rebuild the site for her. And of course, nothing blipped out on my actual site. Um, it looks fine to the average user if I hit refresh. You should see unicorn megaphone, everything changes. Um, so we now have 10 minutes left. Let's tackle the about page. So if I go back to the project root, content is where we're living uh, in the about folder, underscore index.md is my is my uh, section configuration for this. Uh, not much is actually gonna change when I do this, um, but uh, you can uh, change your title and description. Nothing is gonna change in the actual preview because these are populating sort of more metadata. Let me go back here. I'm gonna change my theme real quick again so you can see um, and keep track of where I'm at. I'm gonna go back to where we started with Violet. Okay, so my local preview now is Violet. Uh, so if I made any changes into this underscore index.md file, it could be this sidebar left. Maybe we'll do a true. Maybe I'll show you what the header looks like when I set it to false. If I click save, 
there you go. So you can see now my sidebar is on the left and then that header goes away and you can see that the sidebar just kind of stays there. I'm gonna bring back that header because I kind of like it. Show header true, there we go. And that's really all I'm gonna change in the, um, the about page is I'm moving my sidebar over to one side. I'll go ahead and commit that, but I won't push it yet. New theme, Violet. <laughs> And sidebar left for about, okay. Not gonna commit those yet um, or not gonna push those yet. I just committed. Okay, so inside about again, if I go into header, that's actually gonna be my place for changing uh, this bit right here that you just saw disappear and reappear. So it says, hi, my name is Emily Cooper. Nice to meet you. I'm a driven 20 something American from Chicago who moved to Paris for an unexpected job opportunity. So you can see all of that here um, uh, in this index.md file. So content about header index.md. Uh, so here's the headline. Um, you can show the title as headline if you wanted to. Um, so that would be the title from uh, the previous, from the section uh, itself. Uh, so let's see if I do true. It changes to about, because that's the title of it. Um, so let's use our headline instead. There we go. Uh, and text align right as false. Let's make it true just to show you something different. Um, I'm sorry, it keeps changing to a new, there we go. So now it's all on the right. Um, we'll make this true. I'm a 40 something <laughs> uh, American from, uh, let's see, the Pacific Northwest. Um, back to about, there we go. So you can see that it's changing. Um, it's actually also using um, uh, built-in Hugo support for emojis. So you can insert emojis there. Um, so that's how it's getting that little French flag icon. So that's the, the header. Uh, it's meant to be simple, but it's also meant to just kind of be a, a short blip that you sh that people see right away when they come to your site. About header. Okay, so if we go back to my about folder, we can go to main next. Main is gonna be the wider column here. So at the top of this, it says configure page content and the wide columns. You can see that it has this title of what I'm up to lately. Uh, it's showing the number of featured um, uh, for sections of this. Let's make it, well, if I make it, I don't think I actually have more than one of the um, of projects, but let's see. So now it's showing two of a blog. It'll, oh, and it's showing two projects and two talks. Um, so you can control that. You can also have a little intro here and so uh, so that you don't just kind of dump people into your blog and project and talks. Um, so cultures clash as I adjust to the challenges of life. So you can see that that shows up right there. And then it also has this little outro at the end. And this was something that I saw a lot of people using in their blog down sites um, to be able to have a little place to say like, you know, if my blog has helped you, you can buy me a cup of coffee. A lot of people do that um, or, um, you know, provide a way to um, uh, to link up with them elsewhere. So you have a little place for an outro as well if you wanted to have that. So that's at the bottom there. So that's the main section. And again, there's a, um, a blog post linked to in your readme. Let's see. Can't get back to... Okay. I scroll down to we're almost at the end where the about page is. Yes, so about page. So there's the full docs here. So there is a full um, a full docs about how to do the about page or the about pages. Uh, the last thing I'll tackle is the sidebar because uh, I think this is kind of a nice feature as well. So let me go back to my live preview. So this is how you control this little kind of bookmark thing over here. Um, you have your name, your author, your role. Um, some of this might be repetitive from the homepage, but I wanted to give people the ability to, uh, to customize. You can change the avatar shape here. So let's do circle. Let's get back to about. So it kind of does that smartly. Um, and how it's doing that, uh, how it's finding the file is uh, you have to put a, um, a file that's an image called avatar in the same folder. And so it automatically looks for avatar and fills that in for you. It's also showing the audio link 
um, and it's giving you a place to say what the audio link label is. So whatever you want to put as an audio file, it will find it if you call the file audio. That um, M4A is what it's looking for there. And then we have a little link list where we have pastries, people, uh, Paris. And so you can make this be anything that you wanted to. Um, so let's do Paris, France. Um, cinnamon pastries maybe to be more specific. Maybe nice people. I don't know why it keeps going back to the home page, but that should update. There we go. All right, and so it's pulling those social links um, from what you already set up in your config toml file. So when we say social so, show social links, that's true. You could make it false just to not show those icons at all if you wanted to. Um, and they're also at the bottom as well. So if you felt like you were socialed out, you could do that as well. Okay, so I've got a lot of commits here, a lot of things to push. I've got three minutes left. Let's go out in a blaze of glory and make sure that I can still commit. Um, about main, um, edit about main number featured. And change about sidebar look. Okay, so I have a bunch of commits. I don't know how many. I'm going to push them all up. Let's hope that nothing has broken. I am good to go. And then I'm going to go back to how I've been going before. So if I'm back in my GitHub repository, if I click refresh, I was at 31. Now I'm at 36 commits. So I had five commits in there. Let's go back to Netlify. Here you can see that it, it has said, I'm listening, I'm building, and it's already starting to build. So the build is actually already completed. Now it's working to deploy my site. Site is live. Let's go over to Zealous Kepler. And it should be also a different theme because I changed it to Violet so you could see what I was locally previewing. And let's go to the About page. And you can see that all the changes have populated. It's taking a bit to get all the images in there. So we're at 12.58. Um, this has been a whirlwind tour of um, how to customize a Hugo Apero site. But my hope is that at the end of this, now you have everything working locally for you and you can always recreate the site if you want to. You can always go back and do the exact same thing that you did before. Name the repository something different at that step when you deployed to Netlify. And you can make a copy of all the files again and make sure that they're um, they're working for you. Um, and so if you, if you kind of wanna just use this as a testing ground, you definitely can. It should work um, uh, going forward with uh, new versions of Blogdown. Uh, it looks like there's a question about any final tips on potential debugging. Um, we are updating the blog down book right now, and um, I'm hoping that all of my tips will, will end up in there. We've got a few um, different outlines going for that. Um, and then somebody asked, can you put some reference for this and also how to build a custom Hugo theme? Um, I'm happy to offer advice. Um, there's a lot of resources out there for how to build custom Hugo themes. Um, I believe I have a blog post about it. Let me see. Um, I do have a couple in my Spoonful of Hugo series. So I have a couple about Hugo. There's one for troubleshooting your build. Um, by and large, I've tried to make changes actually to the blog down package to make it so that you don't need all those tips that I have on my blog. Those are a little bit out of date. Um, the last tips that I would give you is to use the new blog down checking functions. So I'll run those right now for the rest of the people who are still here. Um, and I made it so that your, um, your site passes all the checks, but Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, we have the blog down package installed here. So I'm going to do a final uh, check site. Um, this is sort of like the kitchen sink approach. So this is going to check everything in our site. There's a lot of different checking functions. So if you do check underscore, um, you can see all the different blog down checking functions. There's checking your config toml file, checking your content, checking your git ignore checking Hugo and checking Netlify. So those are all the various moving pieces that we've talked about during this workshop. Um, but CheckSite does all of those all at once for you. So um, I tend so, to like to check individual ones. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. Uh, right. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so check underscore. Um, this is how you can see check underscore. You can see all the checking functions there. Check config, check content, check get ignore, check Hugo, check Netlify, check site. We're going to do check site. That's the kitchen sink approach. 
and these are all of my best tips for debugging all in one place. So you can kind of try to think of CheckSite as like us holding your hand and trying to help you do the right thing. So it's running a series of automated checks for your blog down website project. Uh, it gives you a little key to tell you what a su successful check looks like, a to do, and then it tells you what it's going to do. It checks your configuration file first. Um, it will tell you to update your base URL and you should do that when you're ready to publish. Uh, that's in your config toml file as it tells you. Uh, ignore files looks good. Everything else looks good in your configuration toml file. Your git ignore file looks good. You can see that we have all success messages here. Checking Hugo. Now I have a lot of Hugo versions installed. Um, we are using Hugo 0 0.8, 0.0 here. Um, and it's actually doing the same thing on Netlify um, and using the blog down, um, uh, the blog down version in your R profile as well. So blog down is using that version to build your site locally. Checking Netlify Tomal files. So that's how we check to make sure that uh, everything is in sync between your Netlify and local Hugo versions. And it says it's a match. Those are using the same Hugo version and they're using the same published directory. So you're good to go there. And then it also checks your content files. So it checks all your YAML metadata. It checks for future published dates, which won't be actually published when you hit publish. Uh, they will be seen in your live preview, but you won't see them. So this can commonly happen, um, especially if you've got talks, for example, in the future that you want to use. Um, uh, found zero files marked as drafts, uh, checking all your R markdown content. So it actually checks whether you've knitted your files. Um, so it will flag you if you haven't knitted correctly um, or if you forgot to knit, for example. And it looks like all markdown output files are up to date with their source files. So that's my best advice for troubleshooting is to run that um, and run it pretty frequently. I usually run it when I'm leaving my session always to make sure that I haven't messed anything up by the time I get back. Um, let's see, any other questions? Yes, we have we another to... question. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Um, it's uh, do we need to go for each uh, check separately or uh, with only one comment? Uh, it's up to you. When I'm teaching, usually if I have a lot of time, I go one by one as we're changing things. So um, as I change things um, as I work, I usually like if I'm editing the config toml file, then when I'm done, I usually run check config um, to make sure because I don't need all the other stuff. I just need what I want and what I know I changed. Um, if I've been messing with content, I'll do check underscore content. Um, uh, if I'm trying to debug something, I'll I'll start running other checks. Uh, so it's up to you and your workflow. Uh, a lot of people really prefer the check underscore site because it's all one thing and you don't have to remember it. Um, I tend to like to uh, go piecemeal when I'm running into an actual error because I like to be able to scope out and try to rule out things one at a time. <laughs> so um, so it's up to you. Either one, they're, they're going to be the exact same output. Just one is one function and the other is going um, one at a time. Um, also, we have another question is, uh, mm -hmm. can we directly deploy uh, Xerengen slide, uh, slides in Hugo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that all the time. Um, so where you should do that is if you go back to your project root in your static folder, you could do um, slides there. Um, I'll go in here. I'll create a new uh, R Markdown file. Let's do from template. Let's find Sheringen. I'll install Leaflet, I guess. Um, I'll save this in my slides folder, let's do, call it Ninja. It's still installing Leaflet. Um, ooh, that's a big install. Okay, um, so it's done that now. I'll hit save and then um, you would need to knit this. Okay, so you can see that it kind of took over my viewer, um, but what'll actually happen, let's see, do I still have a live preview going? I think I closed it. Let's do serve site instead. So if we go to serve site now, um, anything that goes in your static folder ends up in the root of your um, uh, of your actual site when it's built, uh, but you don't put static in the file um, path. So here I would do slides ninja.html. And you can see that my sure engine slides are there. Uh, so the relative link, if you're linking from within a blog post would be um, this part right here, slides ninja.html. So let's add it to a blog post real quick. We'll go to blog, Star Wars makes sense, right? Oh no, that's not a, yeah, that's good. We can do that. Okay. 
and some slides here. Um, and I'm just going to link um, I'm going to create a simple link there. I think that should work, but this is sort of a moment of live previewing Hugo relative links. Okay, let's go to blog. I added it to Star Wars and then I added a link to slides. Does it work? Yeah, that works. Okay, perfect. Um, we could also add it, if you remember I had links, there was like icon, maybe is it image? Icon pack, I think it's F8 solid name slides. URL. Does that work? No, that didn't work. Let's see how I did it before. I went to project penguins. Oh. Needs to be a map. Hmm. Okay. Won't be able to do that live. I'll have to figure out what I did wrong there. Con. Maybe I'll just try this first. I thought I added it to blog posts, but it might not be actually enabled for blog posts. So I'll add that to my to do list. It's not there currently. So it looks like links don't work in the blog posts. So that'll be on my to do list for the, the theme itself. So I'm going to add, let's see, I'm going to select all oh, and let's add, see it added a bunch of stuff because there's a lot of uh, dependencies for that uh, default um, slide deck. Uh, so add a Sherengen slide deck and then link to it. Okay, so that should show up in not too long in my Star Wars. In my Star Wars, so we'll see. Uh, see how long Nellify takes. Um, any other questions I can answer? Uh, I think uh, there is no more question right okay. now. Um, if there is a question for us, we'll be getting this recording. Yes, uh, we will share with you the recording. It will be shared in uh, the YouTube channel of uh, Our Ladies Tunis. I will share with you the link as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. I did see a comment that, um, uh, you know, is there anything special we need to do basically to um, to publish this website? Is that link public for everyone? And it is. You can see um, you can see that my link is public. Um, uh, maybe in one second here before we leave, I'll show you how to change that name so that you're not stuck with Zealous Kepler. Uh, if you go to your site settings, let me make this a little bit bigger. Make sure I'm still sharing my screen since I keep doing that. All right. Um, and so in your, in your project, this is what your landing page sort of might look like. You want to go over to site settings. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the site information and you can actually change your site name. So I'm going to change this. This means that all my zealous Kepler links are going to be broken. But um, uh, let's see if Emily Cooper is taken. Oh man, I got Emily Cooper. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so no one's taken that yet. Okay, so um, so now that means Ze Zealous Kepler is not going to work for me anymore. But um, that's how you would change it. And then uh, I do have instructions for how to um, uh, how to change that and get a custom Rbind uh, IO uh, address, uh, which is what I use. So for my own personal site, I'm Allison.Rbind.io, uh, and we have some instructions about how to do that in the blog down book as well. So uh, if you'd like to get a custom domain like that, you can do that and use still use Netlify and, and have the whole workflow that we went over today, um, have that just work. Yes, um, so I think there are uh, no more questions. Okay. So if there is uh, no more question, um, I think uh, the workshop uh, is ending. <laughs> <laughs>
the session is ending, but um, also I want uh, to invite uh, all of you to our next session, uh, next session, next meetup. It's with um, Dr. Lisa Lendwe. Uh, she will present to us GitHub for collaboration. Uh, there is uh, the link to subscribe. Uh, in the chat, so feel free if you want to join us uh, to subscribe. Uh, also, uh, we will have uh, Alison Horst for the part two of uh, Tidyverse. Uh, the, the meetup is shared already in uh, meetup. Uh, you can find more details in our meetup. And for the recording, uh, please uh, follow us uh, and we will find it uh, in our YouTube channel. We will share it uh, soon. And also it will be shared also with uh, all the participants via their emails. So uh, finally, I would thank uh, Alison for this great workshop. I learned a lot from you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for, uh, very much for this uh, live coding session. Uh, it was really amazing. Excellent. Well, I'm happy to stay for a few more minutes to troubleshoot for people who are struggling too. So if you wanted to, if you can leave it open, I, I know there was a few questions that were lingering about get GitHub and stuff. So um, if you want to leave it open, I can stay for about 20 more minutes. Yeah. So I can leave it uh, open uh, if, uh, if someone, I, so I think also I have um, more three minutes to be, uh, because of Zoom. It's only, oh, okay. uh, yeah, the Zoom is only two, hour, uh, two hours, two hours, 15 okay. minutes. Yeah. Okay. But I think uh, they, ca they can uh, send you an email uh, or they can uh, send us an email to our Perfect. email, uh, tunis at ourladies.org, and we will uh, share it with you. Yeah, and, and for me, maybe the... Um, uh, I'll send you um, the link to the uh, the GitHub repository too. People could um, could file issues there if yes. they're having questions. I can help with that. As I can see in the in the chat, people are very satisfied satisfied for. I have a question uh, that's yes. not GitHub related. Uh, oh yeah. And I thought it was easier than typing. I started typing three times and I'm like, that's too long. Um, so I, let me turn on the camera. So I was wondering, is it possible to have like those buttons on the top that they change the theme? So for dark to light, because sometimes it's it's late and you're still reading a blog and, but you don't want to keep like a light theme and you just want to switch to a dark oh. theme. I think like this. Yeah, I haven't built that in. Um, that would be a, an additional JavaScript thing um, uh, to be able to have that like little toggle button sort of for like yeah. dark and light mode. Um, yeah, that would definitely be a feature request that I would love help on from someone who uh, knows JavaScript really well. But um, yeah, I haven't built that in yet. Okay, thank you. So maybe when uh, Corona ends, we will invite Alison to Tunis. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop myself. It's 2 a.m. over here. But uh, thank you so very much, Alison, for this because uh, I mean I, I hate Git Git because I've never used it. Don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, so this that, you know, this was like throwing you in the deep end right away. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But but I uh, but I really love uh, you know making websites and and uh, doing that creative work. And you you can think of it. It's already two a.m. right now. I started off you know two hours before. I, it it has been like that. But then I mean thank you so very much for this. And uh, I guess my WordPress is going to move to Netlify now. <laughs> it's it's I'm a happy customer yeah <laughs> but I'm I'm very glad that we were all here and present for your your first success with Git and GitHub in our studio <laughs> that's a, I know how that feels that's like a big a trophy moment so <laughs> I'm glad you were able to work through it uh, so you can also share with that uh, with us um, our uh, websites once it's, uh, it's done, we will uh, be happy to share it uh, in uh, our social media accounts. And definitely tag me as well. I'd love to see and yeah. uh, give visibility yes. to more voices in the RStats community. Yes, 
feel free to tag our lady students and uh, Alison when uh, publishing uh, your websites. Definitely, we'll be more than happy to do so. <laughs> If you have one minute, um, Alison, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I noticed uh, you didn't talk too much about the license. I know that one mm -hmm. can select, uh, but is there more material we can read about it? Or how do you determine which license uh, to use? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think for personal websites, I think that's really just your choice, really. Um, uh, I tend to do, because I, I want people to be able to... Uh, take my materials and do whatever they want with them. I tend to use a pretty open license, but, um, but I think for your own site, you can choose to do whatever license you please. Um, I think there are some good guidance resources. Like um, there's, I think it's which license, um, let me, I'm doing a quick Google search real quick. Um, choose a license, uh, dot com. Uh, so, uh, let me put that in the chat here. Um, uh, that one is probably my best recommendation for that, but, um, but there's definitely some, some people who have kind of, um, better takes on it than I do. Um, and I realize that I'm kind of in a different situation where I, I just want, I want to put stuff out there and let people use it however they want, but certainly, uh, I don't think anyone would ever blame you for having a more restrictive license on your, on your content, especially if you're posting things that are related to your work or some of your creative, um, uh, contributions that, you know, you might charge money for, like if you were doing consulting or things like that. So um, different people use different licenses for teaching and for their own personal uh, sites. So I, I, I think um, generally, uh, you know, it's your site, um, you own it and, you know, make it what you're, you're comfortable with. Um, right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, shall we adjourn? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying for the oh, online.io okay. and uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm not able to find out how do I actually go ahead and get it done. I, I'm with, on making websites with r.rpine.io at the moment. Uh, let me see. I'm not, I'm not certain um, that I know that part, but uh, how it works, um, how are we doing on time? Can I share my screen again? Or are you uh, needing to cancel the Zoom room? Uh, I don't know. I think you can share your screen. OK, all right. Um, so uh, here is our bind support. Um, so this is where I would go. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, uh, and then what you do is you file a GitHub issue. Um, and if you just go to this repository and you click on new issue, uh, it actually gives you a nice template that can help kind of hold your hand as you do it. Um, so it says, please use this template for new rbind.io subdomain requests. A volunteer will help you create this subdomain later. Um, we don't really have enough human resources here, so please be serious about your site. So, so you know, kind of, we want to make sure that you know you're you're actually going to use it. Don't just use it as a way to experiment necessarily. Um, and so, what you provide is your Netlify website address. So, you know, you have one now. Like mine is Emily Cooper, Emily Dash Cooper .app, So I'd provide that. And then what your preferred rbind.io subdomain is. So it will be, you know, it could be emily-cooper.rbind.io. And then you need to click on this agreement. I promise I'll write at least one blog post or create one web page on my website after I get the rbind.io um, subdomain. Uh, and then you submit your new issue. Once they confirm that you've got that URL, um, the only thing you need to do on your site is go back to your config toml file. And at the very top where I have base URL as a forward slash, you'd you'd put in your new rbind.io um, address. So um, let's see, I think Emily Cooper is my current site. Hold on. Um, so right now with my emilycooper.netlify, I would just go ahead and put that as my base URL um, if you wanted to use that. Um, but if you updated to an rbind.io, then you would change that again. So you just keep changing the base URL 
and then sending that up to GitHub and Netlify to make sure that it propagates. Basically, it is it is uh, a duplicate website of Netlify, right? Um, can you say that again? I'm saying it is it is a duplicate website for Netlify. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So your Netlify URL will still um, will still work because mm -hmm. uh, it's not taking anything away. Um, but uh, it would basically be like a redirect, essentially. Um, so it, it's a rewrite redirect in the sense that the user will never see your Netlify address. Um, so for me, for my site, uh, everything that you click on shows allison.rbind.io. Um, but technically, under the hood, um, I have it a Netlify. It is a Netlify. I have a Netlify.app. Um, and I, oh, it's a press hill. That's what it is. So I was trying to remember what it was. A press hill dot netlify dot app. Um, if you go to that, that's my same website. Okay. And I don't have to make any changes in terms of the URL, which I'm putting in, uh, for, for the, uh, markdown. The uh, you do need to change the base URL and your config. Only the base URL, only, only mm -hmm. the base URL, right? Yeah, and that's it, it. It takes the, the sub, you know, uh, child yeah. pages into the main ones. So when I made this theme, I was very intentional about this. Every single call to a URL is using uh, a Hugo relative URL function. So I made sure that nothing will break when you change that base URL. My 15 year old HTML is coming back now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that can often be a source of pain when you uh, change your base URL and have things break. Um, uh, but this, this site should work. I've tested it in a number of different places and with different kinds of um, base URLs and subdirectories and on cloud um, or studio cloud. Uh, so uh, I believe that I've made it so that this works. Um, so, uh, and it certainly works for me um, uh, uh, with my site and um, with a couple of other sites that I've made using the same theme. So yeah, just make sure you update that base URL. The main thing that that's going to do is, um, you know, populate um, some important things that matter for, um, uh, for sharing metadata, things like that, SEO. But I mean, nobody knows this apreshill.netlify.app. Um, you would, so that looks you cool. click around, it doesn't. I like it. Yeah, it's nice and simple. And you might be able to get like your first name, like it's not that exclusive yet. So, you know, Sumit, you, you might be able to get your first name. Like you, I, oh, yeah. I initially yeah. got Apres Hill and then um, Eway messaged me and was like, you should just be Allison. There's no other Allison's with one L. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think of <laughs> doing that. So I, I claimed it. I, I staked my claim early. So, you know, um, most, a lot of names are available still. So um, you can uh, give it a shot and they'll tell you what, you know, if they're, if you need to edit yours. And how much is the web space and the bandwidth which we are looking for in our mind? Or is there any upper limit for that? Uh, I believe that's more of a Netlify concern. So Netlify does have a free tier, but um, uh, Netlify charges based on build minutes and Hugo mm -hmm. is pretty fast, but that is why I wouldn't necessarily push all the time. Um, so every time you're making changes, maybe kind of do them in batches because um, Netlify will eventually get you into a paid tier. The only time I've ever even gotten close to the paid tier was when I was actually working on this theme and I was I was doing a lot of um, uh, pushes uh, to GitHub and trying to I was trying to activate more deploy previews. So I was um, I was really using up burning up my build minutes there. Um, but yeah, I uh, three hundred minutes in a month. Yeah, <laughs> um, is web space and three hundred minutes in a month. So like you can see here, yeah, I've got 76 used up um, out of 300 for this um, uh, until June 1st. So, um, so I'm doing okay. For now, I guess that would be all. Let me, let me go ahead and start making something. Uh, this is, uh, this is, oh, sorry, the links won't work without that. Hopefully, I'll be able to make it better in, in Netlify. So this one, this is mm -hmm. this is an atrocity over here in, in WordPress. <laughs> I, I was just trying it. I mean, 15 years old, mm -hmm. you know, thing, and then I'm just trying it back again uh, because you know one one requires a portfolio, you know, a, a, a website or a portfolio to showcase. And LinkedIn is is out outdated now at the moment. So too many things going on. Hopefully this will work out in time or so. <laughs> hey, 
Yes, I think uh, we can close uh, now because it's already uh, 9 p.m. in Tunis. <laughs> it's a little bit late. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. It was thank wonderful. You, thank you. Thank you. It was you. Uh, really wonderful. You and um, follow us. We will uh, have... Uh, other meetup who are uh, very uh, interesting. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you, Alison, uh, for <laughs> the million time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. This was really fun. I really thank appreciate you. it. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night, Sumit. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Good night everyone.